This is the Gospel for the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went on a journey. Then vintage time drew near. He sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper time. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Okay, we find a sentence here pronounced by the landowner, let's say, the Father, the God the Father, that is very interesting to me. After sending different, um, le let's say, um, at, after sending his servant to the tenants, he decided to send his son, and he thought for himself, they will respect my son. It's kind of strange to hear that, because if God knows everything, obviously he will know that they will kill his son. But anyway, he sent his son. And this is like a naive attitude or a naive expression from God. He, he thought they will respect my son. It seems like God every time thinks or expect, expects us to fulfill his will, even though sometimes we don't fulfill his will, we just sin. This is a big mystery, but the main thing is how is God's heart? God's heart never give up, never um, end to to trust us, that's, that's wonderful, that's amazing. And uh, even though we have to confess uh, often, we, we don't do God's will often, every time we start over, He gives us the grace and He expects us to obey Him. It's like He says that to us, they will respect my son. You will respect my son. Father Astolfo will respect my son. That's wonderful. How big is uh, the God, the love of God? And on the other hand, this is a teaching for us because sometimes when somebody um, hurts us or doesn't do what we expect from them, we can feel like wounded and we don't trust other people and we expect to behave, we, we start to behave like in a different way. We close our hearts to the other. But the Lord, even though the tenants killed a lot of his servants, he doesn't um, end. He always trusts. 
his people, that's wonderful, and a healed heart, nor not a wounded heart, a healed heart, uh, behaves as, as, as the Lord. For example, the Lord always um, walked with his apostles and they always um, sinned and they didn't do what they were expected to do. But the Lord didn't throw them away. He always stay at his side. And I think this is very, very, very interesting and, and a big teaching for us. If our parents, our wife, our husband, or anyone close to us um, doesn't do uh, what we expect from them, we are not called to close our hearts, but to continue trusting in them. We can say, they will respect my son, and we are going to be, to do the will of God, and we are going to behave in the image of God when we uh, not close, when we don't close our hearts to the other. So let's contemplate God's heart, God's behavior, and learn to be close to Him every time we can um, convert, and on the other hand, we can accept the others even though they make us suffer. God bless you. Thank you.